The Devonian black shales of McCann's Valley and surrounding areas are a valuable repository of information on greenhouse epoch ocean and not only the shale hydrocarbon prospect. The IPCC collects massive scientific evidence that an uncontrolled anthropogenic accelerator of global warming may profoundly alter the ocean atmosphere circulation by the end of this century. This diagram by the Potsdam Research Group is a good illustration. It shows the record of the cyclic glacials and dirty glacials over the past uh, 800,000 years and the projection into future. The ice volume uh, proxies to insulation and the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere show a nice cyclic correlation until the Industrial Revolution, which skyrocketed the CO2 to present day level, leaving the natural regulation mechanisms far behind. This high CO2 and obviously methane as well, uh, causes the uh, global ice retreat, although the insulation is presently far not at its highest point. Projections for the future with uh, uh, 1,500, 1,500 and zero uh, gigaton of anthropogenic CO2 uh, would not bring the ice volume back in any foreseeable future. And even if the mankind will stop emitting under the most optimistic and least realistic scenario of zero gigaton, the Earth's surface will just delicately balance in the interglacial condition instead of regaining the lost ice volume. The science-based solutions, uh, how to bring the ice back certainly exist. For example, the large scale sequestration of greenhouse gases, but they are beyond my scope for this talk. And instead, uh, I will sneak peek into a potential warmer and uh, even ice-free earth which is beyond the immediate uh, human experience as a biological species. But such conditions are extensively recorded for our curiosity and learning in deep time sedimentary archives. The 537 million years of pre-quaternary geological history provide plethora of examples of steady state greenhouse conditions which lasted collectively about 70% of the Phanerozoic time. Overall, the biosphere was feeling well during these greenhouse uh, periods, uh, uh, even permitting the evolution of uh, vastly uh, diverse faunas and floras like dinosaurs and uh, flower plants during the Mesozoic greenhouse and uh, first trees and first land, vertebrates, our remote ancestors during the Devonian greenhouse. However, these periods of happiness and blossom were punctuated by overwarming crisis. This crisis recently named the hothouse condition were likely triggered by mass eruptions and degassing in continental Lachigneous provinces. And in many proven cases, uh, the hothouse crisis are coupled with mass extinctions. At the same time, the greenhouse conditions stay behind vital economic resources. For example, this diagram shows that about 90% of oil and gas originates from six time beans, which collectively lasted less than 30% of the Phanerozoic time. Most of this resource occurs in greenhouse time sedimentary basins where accumulation and preservation of kerogen would not be possible under oceanographically similar present day conditions. These diagrams are some of uh, many recent models demonstrating just how different the global Earth uh, surface temperatures or CO2 concentrations were from today's world. Vast sedimentary archives of Canada can provide indispensable information uh, on the ice-free uh, Earth surface, as well as the events of biotic perturbations associated with um, uh, greenhouse conditions. And 
one of these archives is the Middle Upper Devonian Horn River Group of the Project Area here in Oval, which was deposited in a tropical sedimentary system open to Pantalassa Ocean, as shown in this reconstruction. The North, sorry, the Horn River Group is a hydrolytic uh, stratal package which is some 100 to 400 meters thick, as shown on this cross section. And the right uh, map uh, shows the um, uh, surface and subsurface distribution of the Horner group in the study area. The Horner group is dominated by black and gray shales and siltstones. It consists of three formations the black to Gray shale high region, uh, dominantly limestone ramparts formation, and the canal formation, which consists of thin bedded siliceous shales and charts. Upwards, the canal formation grades into the thick interbedding of mostly fine siliciclastics of the imperial formation. The basal black shale. A unit of the Herringian formation is relatively uniform in thickness and facious composition and is called the blue, uh, the, blue, the blue fish member. The overlying part of the hair region is quite uneven, laterally and in facious. Uh, in the central region, here in the box, the hair region is up to 200 meters in thickness and is composed of gray shales and siltstones. The upper part of the hair engine is calcareous and grays into limestones of the ramparts formation. And the upper part of the ramparts limestone is called the Kiskarp member. This unit forms uh, narrow cravat banks or reefs in many works, one of them producing oil in Norman Wells oil field. To the west and south of this central zone, the thick gray shales of the hair engine and the ramparts are absent. There, the hair engine is mostly represented by black organic rich shales. In these of bank areas, the canal itself is thickest uh, uh, unit of uh, this organic rich package, uh, which locally exceeds uh, 100 meters. It is in this southern off bank area here. Uh, where uh, these black shales of the Horner group have been recently explored for shale uh, hydrocarbons. This slice exemplifies the Horner group in outcrops of the Mackenzie and Franklin Mountains. This magnificent outcrop of uh, Prohibition Creek uh, south of Norman Wells and this outcrop in the northern Mackenzie, which is the type section for the canal, canal formation. Um, the black shale sections in the off-bank areas, like this one, may look superficially monotonous, but field and lab instrumental measurements allow robust subdivision and tracing of stereographic signals. Clearly, our research team at GSC is not the only uh, one advancing the study of the Honorary Group. The anti-GS data from the, their uh, McKenzie Plain project and the successor project and the brilliant uh, work of Yukon Geological Survey in their respective jurisdiction are to be mentioned here. However, most of these achievements are beyond my scope and uh, I will only focus on a few interesting findings. Detailed every half a meter elemental and rocky logs were obtained in two continuously core sections of the southern off bank area. Here is an example from one of these sections. The molybdenum and uranium enrichment proxies here in the excess and enrichment factor notations reveal four main horizons of alphagenic trace metal enrichment. Here numbered AH1, 2, 3, and 4. AH here stands for the anoxic horizon or more precisely the horizon of enhanced anoxia in the overall anoxic basinal section. These horizons of uh, trace metal enrichment are also the horizons where siliciclastics are notably receding, uh, exemplified by alumina law. 
uh, and where the excess of silica is high. And uh, the total organic carbon is also peaking uh, at these anoxic horizons. Uh, and this curve uh, is the elemental proxy to the degree of periodization. It shows that iron uh, uh, in the anoxic section is, most, is mostly uh, bound in uh, pyrite and maybe marcasite, and therefore it's for case uh, uh, close to one. The four horizons of enhanced anoxia are traced in surface and subsurface sections uh, with spectral gamma ray proxies. Here is an example uh, of the subsurface traceability uh, from the central McKenzie Valley. The organic rich, sorry, the organic matter carbon isotope data. In these two overlapping logs, the uh, delta 13C fluctuates between minus 31.5 and minus 26.3, which is perfectly within the range of coeval black shield basins of the world. Uh, four most pronounced positive excursions are here uh, labeled with uh, letters A, B, C, and D. Uh, the excursions A, C, and D uh, are related to the input of coal detritus in silicyclastic rich units which correlates well with uh, deflections in the uh, oxygen index from uh, Rocky Wall. Excursion B, however, does not correlate to, to silicyclastic spikes or the spike and uh, it occurs in the basal part of uh, anoxic horizon two. H3 and four are also expressed as moderate positive excursions here and here. And the AH1, unfortunately, uh, is not clear at this uh, sampling frequency. Uh, it shows a scattered range of moderately positive and uh, negative data. Another interesting finding comes from the gas chromatography mass spectrometry spectra of organic matter extracts. Here is the stratigraphic position of samples. And these are chromatograms. The spectra show the strong and persistent lines of areal isoprenoids in every sample. These are biomarkers of the green sulfur bacteria, which are obligatory anaerobes. These are used as reliable biomarkers uh, for the photic zone euxenia, or in other words, position of the chemical line in the shallow sunlit environment. At the same time, the bottom conditions weren't permanently euxenic. Black shale fascias contain tiny pyrotized sponge speckles. some obviously in situ, like on this photograph. The mimic replacement of by, by pyrite is uh, clearly seen in the backscattered electron mode where uh, uh, where pyrotic object, objects appear as uh, electronically dense, bright structures. On these uh, logs, you can see that the sponge speckles are overall rare or infrequent in the chemical formation, which uh, most likely uh, is explained by their taphonomic elimination. Sponge speckles aren't the only fossils found in these rocks. Mass acritarchs, uh, many layers of acritarchs are pyritized and densely encrusted with uh, pyrite framboids and pelagic microfossils like uh, tiny tentaculites, uh, radiolari, and the uh, uh, largest fossils like uh, um, uh, anaptiki of cephalopods, goniatite, ammonoids, etc. Uh, are also occur there, but uh, sponge speckles are essentially the only skeletal remains of benthic life occurring in these anoxic mother rocks. Another feature. There is a geochemical evidence for the oceanographic openness. In a very representative set, counting just short of 1700 data, the black shale units hosting anoxic horizons show strong correlation of molybdenum and uranium. 
the system is not only rich in molybdenum, which uh, triples and sometimes even quadruples the present day sea water ratio. The field of these Devonian black shales is matching the sediments of the Cariaco basin of the present day Southern Caribbean and is quite different uh, from the appearing affected Pacific continental margins and very much unlike what is observed in uh, permanently sealed basins like Black Sea. The westernmost and most paleogeographically offshore section trail river is uh, most enriched in uh, molybdenum, suggesting unrestricted supply of molybdenum ions from the ocean. Phosphorus. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the, the system was notably lean in phosphorus, as seen on this TOC and total uh, phosphorus logs in three sections. Here, only regression lines are shown for simplicity. The reference line of uh, 0 0.07 uh, is the reference value representing the uh, average con concentration in shales. The total phosphorus uh, does not correlate with uh, total organic carbon and is not markedly enriched anywhere in the Horner group. In fact, it stays below the reference value. The westernmost trail river section is most depleted in phosphorus. These findings lead us to a few conclusions. Firstly, the Horn River group uh, imprints the events of enhanced anoxia traceable with the mantle, gamma spectrometry, and carbon isotope proxies. Secondly, the Horn River group deposited in oceanographically open shelf of sea. Fourthly, uh, thirdly, these basinal madrox ac ac accumulated under strong high frequency chemical fluctuations ranging from the photic zone to the seafloor. And finally, the basin was rather oligotrophic and perhaps the high organic matter content originated from the high preservation potential rather than from a high primary production. The we west coast tropical location of this shelf of sea is particularly intriguing. It would be prone to nutrient resupply uh, from upwellings under the present day ocean circulation, but somehow it didn't work back then. Now, looking out a bit out of the box, here is the uh, compilation of anoxic uh, uh, horizons or black shell horizons in uh, six relatively well studied uh, regions of the world. The right side shows the, the trended uh, uh, sea level curve uh, evolved from Johnson et al. 1985, large igneous provinces uh, and the carbonate carbonized top curve from a geological time scale 2012. The biotic perturbations are expressed here by extinction origination curves from the paleobiology database. With new countdown updates from Sophie Howey, the whole river group of the study area is dated from the uppermost Iphelian and census zone to the Hasi to Renana zones of the uh, uh, Franian. The AH1 is correlated with the global Kachak event, the AH2 uh, to Fran event. AH3 and uh, 4 together find correspondence in the major spread of uh, bla black shales, shuffle um, anoxic sediments in the, uh, uh, in the Moskva, Dverney, Rice with Middlesex, Lower Domanic uh, source rocks. The photic zone Euxenia was not a whimsy of only this uh, depositional system. This compilation shows that rather it was a normal condition of oceanographically open and semi-restricted black shell basins of the middle Devonian to lower Mississippian greenhouse world. This nice animation from NASA uh, educational resources gives an idea how the modern ocean is being mixed through thermohaline circulation, which applies to every ice house epochs of the Phanerozoic with uh, variables, of course, imposed by uh, different continent configurations. The present day thermohaline circulation, which is uh, called sometimes the ocean conveyor belt, is capable of completely returning the oceanic water mass in uh, 1,000 to 2,000 years. This magnificent conveyor is tightly coupled with atmosphere circulation cells and is driven by the Coriolis force of the rotating Earth, the strong 
temperature uh, gradient between the equator and the poles and the uneven salinity and density. This uneven density is produced by several factors. A river discharges uh, sinking of dense brines concentrated by evaporation in mid latitudes and the withdrawal of fresh water into marine ice caps on poles. As a result, the cold, dense water uh, with elevated salt content sinks in polar regions. Now, if the ice is removed from the Earth's surface, the thermal component of the ocean circulation is weakened or during the warming extremes potentially shuts off. Under such a warm greenhouse mode, modeling indicates a uh, 10 times slowdown in the water turnover, uh, expanding stratification, and the great expansion and shallowing of the oceanic oxygen minimum zones, plus the essential reversal of bottom currents. Apparently, the depositional system of the Hollywood group records uh, uh, such condition, which looked much unlike today's uh, thermohaline uh, water mass uh, turnover. And the anoxic horizons in Hollywood group indicate the episodes of severing uh, uh, global warming. Features revealed in this depositional system, as well as in other coival black shell basins are paradoxic from the actualistic point of view, but they provide a clue to better understand the scenario of how might be future in the ice-free world, which we all hope is not going to happen. Yeah, wrap up. And uh, just want to acknowledge that this work would absolutely not be done without the biostatigraphic expertise of Sophie Howey and versatile, very substantial help from many others. Thank you for your interest.